Hi folks, welcome to Brew and Build. How do we all start home brewing? Well, we all go out and we buy plastic fermenter buckets or carboys, we buy uh, bottling buckets, so we get siphoning ones, uh, we get a range of, of either PET plastic bottles or glass bottles, we get a bottle capper, and in the end it's an awful lot of money. Generally speaking, you find you don't like that system, so then you buy some more gear, and then you buy some more gear, and it gets quite expensive and we all upgrade. But if you're about to start brewing, how do you even know you like it? You don't want to go and spend that money. And I thought, well, what if I try and brew a beer with no equipment, and I just use what I've got in the house or what I've got in the kitchen? So, what have we got around the house? Well, for a start, I've got a small soup pot, so there's no reason I can't boil something small amount in my pot. We've all got measuring jugs that'll do for the water and the liquids. Kitchen scales, we can weigh anything out we need with a set of kitchen scales, hops, uh, malt extract. Then we come to the fermenter. So I thought, why not a plastic drinks bottle? Uh, it's good to have one with a lid and we'll see why possibly at the end of the process if it works. We need some way of uh, bubbling off the CO2 but not allowing air in. So I've got a bit of rubber hosing. It fits quite nicely in the top. It doesn't seal so I'll maybe wrap some tape around that. Then I figure I'll tape this to the side. I'll get a pot with some water in it take that together and then we've got a fermenter. Uh, then finally we need some way of bottling it. So the obvious thing is drinking beer, let's just drink a couple of flip top ones and we'll bottle into some flip top bottles. Uh, the other option on that of course is maybe some plastic uh, soft drink bottles, so 500 ml plastic soft drink bottles, they can take the pressure so we could bottle into that. Uh, as far as brewing software goes, well, if you want to design your recipe, there's plenty of brewing software that's free online that we can use. Brewer's Friend is a great one. You can do everything on there. They've got all the tools. Uh, support them with a donation or, or, or subscribe to them uh, if, you, if you're that keen on it. But we'll need some sort of calculator to work out the hops bitterness for the beer. We don't want it too bitter. We want this to be drinkable. Uh, you are going to need to buy some things, of course. You're going to need to drop, buy some sort of fermentable. Uh, I'm going to use dried malt extract, so you'll need to buy that from your local brew store or online. You're going to need some hops. Uh, there's no getting around that, so small amount. It's not going to take very much for the size that I'm going to do on this. Uh, and you're going to need some yeast to ferment it with. So some brewing yeast, preferably. You could use some bread yeast, I'm not sure how that would turn out, but you could always try it. And uh, I'm going to make a very small batch. I'm going to aim for about a litre and a half of beer. And we'll bottle condition it with some sugar or maybe some dried malt extract at the end. We'll see how that goes. So let's move into the kitchen and start brewing this up. Okay, the first thing we need to do is sanitise our fermenter. I sanitised this last night by filling it with three teaspoons, three, three or four teaspoons of bicarbonate soda and then filling it to the top with water, giving it a good shake and then leaving it sit. Apparently bicarbonate soda will sanitise a bottle. The only problem with that is the bicarb soda will adjust your water chemistry uh, and potentially give you a, a, a different taste that you may not want in the beer. So I've washed this out fairly thoroughly with my tap water. That's another source of infection possibly. I'm happy that my tap water is pretty clean. I've got it coming straight through some water filters. But if you've got some sort of baby bottle sanitizer or even better star sand brewing sanitizer, uh, maybe use it instead. So anyway, that's ready to go. The next thing we need to do is measure out our fermentables. So here's where I'm going to use a rule of thumb. If you take your how many mil of water you've got take 10% of that and then add a third will give you about 1049 starting gravity when we're dealing with dried malt extract 
So therefore I'm going to use 1500 ml of water, so that's 150. I'm going to add a third, which is 50, which gives us 200. So if I put 200 grams of dried malt extract into 1500 ml of water, I should end up with about 1049. I'll bump that up a little bit, somewhere around 1050, so we'll say something like 205 grams. And then that should give us about 1050, and hopefully we'll end up around about the 5% mark for our beer. So, we'll start by measuring out the malt extract. It's uh, amber malt extract I'm using, rather than pale malt extract. I think the amber will probably give a little bit more flavour. There's a bit of slightly darker malt, possibly crystal malt in there, so we'll hopefully get a bit of flavour out of that. So let's measure out the, the extract first. And next, we're going to add the water. So we'll add 1500 ml of water with the measuring jug. And then I'll just stick it on the stove and we'll start bringing it to the boil. Okay, it's been in the sink for a while and it's cooled down to about groundwater temperature. I'm not going to use a thermometer here, uh, but to touch it's reasonably, reasonably cool. This is the part I'm genuinely not too sure how it's going to go. It's pouring this out without making too much of a mess of it. So we're already spilling a bit out of the jug there. There. All this has been sterilized as well, much like the fermented jug. One down. There's a lot of trube or junk, if you like, in the bottom of the boil, but that seems to be filtering out reasonably well and staying up in the hops. So I'm going to just try and get as much liquid out of this as I can. Good, that's a good level. We've left enough headspace in there that hopefully it won't blow off through the, uh, the blow off tube, but we'll see how that goes. Right, now we need to aerate it a little bit. We'll just put our lid on. I'll give it a bit of a, a bit of a shake. Get some oxygen through it. Uh, for a healthy fermentation and next we'll put put the yeast in you can use I'm sure pretty much any yeast uh, if you do a bit of research on the internet I wouldn't go for a yeast that people are talking about giving them any sort of trouble and stalled fermentations use something fairly reliable for this because we're not going to test the final gravity with the hydrometer so we're just trusting that the end of the bubbles is the end of the fermentation here uh, I'm using Mangrove Jack's Liberty Bell yeast We've used it before, it's it's pretty easy. That packet will do about 25 litres. We've only got about a litre and a half in this bottle. So yeah, not even a tenth of this packet is is going to be probably too much. So I'll just call, tear a little corner off it so that I can pour it nicely in there. And I'll put a bit in there. Well, that's loads for that. This we won't waste. If we just fold the corner over really tightly and then stick that in the fridge, that'll last for, for weeks, if not months, quite easily. So if you're making just a small batch and then you want to make another small batch, you can reuse that yeast. It'll be absolutely fine. 
Right, next we need to put the blow off tube in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the blow off tube just in the top. Once again, I've sanitized this much like the fermenter. I'm just going to get some tape and seal this around the top as best I can. And then I'm going to tape this to the side down here. And all going well, that will sit in there. And there we have our fermenter with blow off tube. Now, if we just fill that with some water or part fill it, just so that there's enough, put a little bubble in there. Now, I'll go and stick this in a warm place out in the utility room and we'll let it ferment. Well, here we are, it's finally tasting day. I can't believe how much I've been looking forward to trying this. This is the least professional beer I've ever brewed, and yet I'm probably looking forward to this more than most beers I think I've done. Uh, I've never bottled in plastic bottles, so I'm interested to see how that turns out. And whilst I'm not expecting any sort of award-winning beer here, it's a single type of DME, uh, and it's a single type of hop, so it's not going to be fantastic. But the big question is, is it going to be a drinkable and reasonable beer? And that's all we're after. So I'm going to try uh, opening this. I'll cut to a shot of opening it and pouring it, and we'll see how this goes. Okay, the pour went well. I was a bit nervous about that. That could have been overcarbonated, but it seems to be pretty good. Uh, first thing I notice is it's got some chill haze to it, but then it should do. We didn't put any finings in it. Uh, it was clear when I put it in the bottles, but when I uh, put it out in the cold storage, it got a bit of chill haze. It's got a really nice foamy head to it. Um, that's, that's a lot better than I was expecting there. It's got good bubbles, good carbonation to it. It doesn't smell off. It 
that's an awful lot better than I was expecting. That's that's a little bit sweet. It's 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 hoppy from the the, the late edition of hops there. There's there's no off flavors at all. It's it's actually quite clean. Now that malt extract has got to be four five years old, uh, and that actually tastes it tastes all right. Um, I thought I might take one sip of that, and uh, and that was going to be it. I'm I'm going to enjoy drinking these. Actually, that's that's really nice. Now, you can play around with that recipe. I mean, you could put uh, steeped grains in there. You could use Belgian candy sugar. You could do all sorts of things with it. All that was was proving that we can brew beer with uh, with no real professional equipment at all, and. And that's done it fantastically well. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this. I've really enjoyed making this video and this beer more than I expected, actually. So uh, if you'd like to see more, uh, subscribe, tune in again, and uh, and we'll see you for the next beer. Thanks for watching.